Hello, hello, we are back again from the Blockchain Center at Bayes University. Um, good to meet all of you today again. Let me know where you're joining us from. Can you just, you know, put on the city you're joining from? Let's see. From Lagos, Kano, Vera Amugo from Lagos, Hassan Udomo from Joss, Bashia Abubakar, Jigawa State, okay. I can see Benjamin from Rivers. Ah, Bruno State, lots of you. Golden Abuja. Okay. You're welcome to day two. And this is just a working session. It's just a working session. So we're not doing any course, we're not doing any demonstration or anything. We just getting you ready for tomorrow because tomorrow is the day you get onboarded into the platform. So it's more of an interaction we're having today, but I'll use that opportunity to look at the curriculum just so you know what you're up against and what we'll be treating in this course. I'll hang on a bit, let more people join us. I learned today, um, some of our uh, peers, they've gone for prayers and they'll be coming back in a bit. So just hang on a bit for you guys. Maybe another five minutes. Thank you.
Okay, while we wait for your peers to come back and join us, maybe we could just have some interaction. I will want to know, um, we've been getting all kinds of questions and people are anxious to know what next. So this is it. Uh, just type in your question on the um, screen there. And then we'll answer them. Thank you. Okay, somebody asked, when are we going to start project? Um, project is the last phase. So we have these first two weeks, which is the pre-course. After the pre-course, we go for another five weeks for people that were selected to that. And after five weeks, the project will then start. So it's the last phase and it will last for five weeks also. Thank you. Somebody is asking what is NIDA? Well, NIDA is National Information Technology Development Agency. They are an agency under the Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy. They are bringing this scholarship to you. That's who they are. Thanks to them, we are having this session today. Um, somewhere, why are we not receiving messages via email, creating that vote? Yes, um, all the messages once you get in on your portal will be via email. But more importantly, in the portal, we have the dashboard in the portal. We have, we call it the notice board. So every day on the notice board, once it's 6 a.m., new information goes out. You can view them at your own convenience. Um, this is coming too fast now. Yes, there are, someone said, would there be practical lectures online? Yes, there will be practical lectures. Even in this pre-course, we'll do practical lectures in this pre-course here, because we have JavaScript, we have Golang. Um, there are lots of practical questions on that. Are we going to be taught how to make NFT from the program? In the pre-course, NFT is not part of the pre-course. But uh, in the main course, yes, because you'll be doing all kinds of projects. If you have interest in NFT, well, fine. You have project on NFT, you will do. I'm interested in this program, but what do you think I need to do before I can enroll? Um, it's quite simple. We always say you'll be ready to give in 20 hours in a week for this. Um, all the programs will give you the introductory. So from this pre-course, that's why we're having pre-course. So we're taking them from the basics. You should be able to 
go on, um, you know, do your assignments and do more research on the topics. Someone said, can the schedules for the training be flexible for those that work? Yes, it is very, very flexible. Um, all the live sessions we will have will be recorded and available to you on YouTube. So at your time, you could go through them. Then the, the quiz will give you all those quiz out in your, on your portal. So you do them at your own time. There'll be deadline, so minimum, uh, at least 40, um, 24 hours. So you have time to do your um, your quizzes. So it's very, very flexible and meets up for anybody that is working. Someone said, when do we get login details to the portal? Uh, yes, um, we are we're almost done with all that. Um, tomorrow is the onboarding day, and everybody, all of you, will be able to access the portal. If I will be doing live demo, as we are doing it, all of you should be able to follow up. Uh, let me say something about the email. So I will have application of about 93,000 applications. Now, our program, our portal, of course, it sends out email but there's a limit to the email you could send, even though we're using the um, Google Business um, uh, Workspace, but there's limit to email. So if we allow the, um, the portal itself to be sending out mail, there are a few people, a few thousand will get, the other, other ones will not get. That's why for the portal, what we have done for the portal is we've set up everybody, you are good, but we want to, upload a default password to everyone on the portal. So we just compromise, okay, your email address, you know your email address, use this to log on. So you don't have to do reset password because if you're doing reset password, it means our server has to send password out to all those thousands of people, um, tens of thousands of people. And some we get, some we not get. So our approach now is we'll set up default password for everyone. So by tomorrow during the demo time, we'll give you what it is and you just go in without resetting. Then you can reset your password later, but it will be something that staggered. Maybe somebody does it on today, another person does tomorrow, you know, staggered like that. And so that's the approach we are having. Hang on, we're almost there. Thank you. Somebody said, those of us that are from capital of our state, and now the fear is so high, we need 6K to go home. It's mandatory to meet up. I'm, I'm not sure I understand this question. I'm really not sure. But you know that most, um, almost 90% of, uh, of your time in this course will be virtual. All you need is internet on your device. Even if you don't meet up the live session, like I say, we'll have the recorded one available. You can go at your own time and read them up. So it shouldn't put extra constraint on you. It's the second bar. It's when we get into the, the, um, the phase two, where we have the 30,000 people. That's when we we'll start meet up. Even at that, meet up only happens on, on Saturdays, just once in a week. So it wouldn't put constraint on you. Thank you. Someone said, please, I got the first email, congratulations, but I didn't get the second email for onboard process. Is there a reason for this? Okay, so um, why sending out the email for the onboarding? There was a big issue with the email providers, you know, the number of emails going and all stuff like that. So at some point, I think some emails got stuck, but um, all those emails, we'll send them through other channels. So if you got the first email at all, say congratulations, that's fine. You are in our, on, in our database and you'll be able to log on to the course portal, all right? 
And uh, we are hoping that when you people log on, we'll see the number of active people. Uh, because we find out some of the emails uh, people filled up, they somewhere wrong, you know. And when this email program, when they are sending that email, they check the bounce rate. If the bounce rate is significant, it affects sending other emails. So we are hoping that when everybody's logged on, we find out which people are active. For you to be active, you, will, you should be logged on. Yeah, you will log on to the portal. You will do your assignments. That tells us you are active. So if that happens, we can streamline things down. So we know we're only sending email to the actual active participant. And with that, all these email problem will go away. But as long as you got our first email that um, you have been selected, that's fine. You are selected and you are on board. You can log on without problems. Thank you. Uh, with that, let's see. Somebody said, okay. Uh, Someone said, I need more clarification on how Bitcoin is being different from blockchain, as you stated in your last session. Okay, Bitcoin is a blockchain. That's what it is. And by the time you go through, in the next couple of days, you understand all this because that's what you'll be learning. So Bitcoin is a blockchain. But you now have Bitcoin cryptocurrency. That one is a different thing. It's, you know, it's an offshoot. It's a crypto. It's different from the blockchain itself. So what you are studying in this course is the blockchain, Bitcoin as a blockchain, not as a cryptocurrency. Okay. Okay, let me take one question from here. What are tools required to use on our system for the program pass, please? So um, for the programming part, you just need to have an editor, a code editor, let's say, Visual code, I use, personally, I use visual, uh, VS code. Um, it works for me. And then for the Golang, you will install the, uh, the compiler for Golang, Golang. But that one too, I uh, will set you up on that. We'll, 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 we'll have session where uh, we we'll have recorded videos, how you do all those setup. So other than that, just have your laptop and then um, Pro coding is more of just your um, your editor and VS Code works very fine. You could use any other thing. There are so many other ones. There's code that are out there. Uh, there are tons of them actually, yeah. What? So what of those that are not hearing English well and cannot speak fluently? They are Arabic and they have applied. Ah, he said they can't hear and they cannot speak. Okay. I assume they can read. So it's two different things. You can't speak it very well. Well, if you can read, you, that's why we're having course materials. You can go through the course materials at your, at your pace, right? And then um, if you do go through the course materials, you answer the question at your own pace. Uh, that, I think that will work for, for almost all of you. And again, this brings up another question. Now you are here doing this program, you could take it upon yourself like, hey, we need to translate some of these courses into Arabic. In fact, it happens. So people go, they take a course that's in English, they translate it into Arabic and it sells. So it could be a project you're looking at. Um, some of these courses we're doing, we, we, we have in English, it's possible to translate them into Arabic. So you could take that as a project with your peers, people that are interested in that project, you all come together, choose one particular thing and you know, do that translation. And I tell you, there will be huge appreciation out there in the community because there are lots of people also that want this thing in their native language. I understand how learning something in your first language is very good. So not just Arabic now, you know, we have Hausa, we have Igbo, we have Yoruba. So if we can translate some of these courses to your native language, um, I think it's something the government will be happy to see. In fact, I throw this as a challenge to you. While we are going through this course, if you have, if you notice somewhere you feel, yes, you can translate this to a native Nigerian language, any native Nigerian language, please let us know. We'll see how we'll support you, right? Uh, good question. Someone asked, please, there are three courses, which are blockchain, JavaScript, Golang. Are we going to select one or are we going all through the courses? All right, the pre-course, we'll do all this in the pre-course. 
And don't worry, the JavaScript and the Golang, we're not going in depth in it. We just want you to have enough skill to know that, okay, when you when we're seeing a, bit, a, a, a script, a blockchain script, you can understand what it is. When you're seeing a declaration of variable, you know, you want to make an array, you should understand what it is. So we'll go through that. It's all of them is part of the pre-course. So what do we need to understand front-end development to succeed in this training? No, you don't need front-end development at all. So if you don't, if you have zero front-end development skill, no problem. It's not a requirement for this, but you're going to learn the JavaScript and the Golang, especially those rudimentary part of them. Um, sir, those of course having a system, is there anything planned for them to simplify their tax, like software, mainly for the blockchain? Okay, I'll say this, the blockchain is, is an open source. Bitcoin blockchain in particular is open source. What it means is that you don't need license for it to use it. It's, a, it's, it's distributed under the free license. And the courses you are doing, JavaScript, Golang, you don't need licenses for them. So there's no need for tax or purchasing any software. They are freely available. Okay, even if you want to run a blockchain node, a Bitcoin node, for instance, it's freely available. You just have your infrastructure, you download your node, put all the components you want in it, and it's running. Uh, let me take one question from here. Are we going to do quiz after every session? In fact, session we come not every day. We don't do session every day, but yes, you will do quiz regularly. As you are consuming the course content online, you, when you log on, you see you are, as you're consuming those content, there are quizzes you have to do. So you complete all of them online at your own pace, right? So we might have deadlines that, you know, for this particular one, it ends so, so day. So just make sure you complete it within that day at any time, in the night, early morning, whatever time that works with you, you do that. Okay. All right, so we are now going back into, today I just want to run to you through um, the curriculum we'll be doing. Um, this will help some of your questions also and um, Someone say, in which day are we going to start our lecture? Once you, uh, once we do the onboarding on Saturday, then you have access to your portal. It started already. And then, um, yeah, most of the courses are there on the portal. You just have to consume them and do the quizzes that follow them. But on our own part, we'll have, like I said, we'll have live session two times every week. So every Tuesdays and every Thursdays from 2 p.m., will be available for live session. So if you have issue, if you have problem with the course or you need assistance somewhere, we have people to explain that to you. So at this point, let me go back and share my screen so we could look at the curriculum together. All right. Okay, this is the NIDA Blockchain Scholarship Curriculum. And the curriculum dates, tentatively we started on the 8th December, and by 22nd November, we should be wrapping this up and go for a break before the second cohort, um, the other, to give us room to, for the selection and onboarding the other um, 30,000 people. So let's look at the curriculum overview. Now, this is only for the pre-course. This is not the entire curriculum. We just have this for the pre-course. So if you're here within the first two weeks, these are what we are going to take a look at. So we have three major topics that we have introduction to Bitcoin theory. That's the background. And this is where I expect everybody to, if, to, to pay attention because just going through this course, you will know everything you need to know about blockchain, right? If you're working in an organization, you're a civil servant, 
um, you, whatever you are, by the time you are done with introduction to Bitcoin theory, you understand the blockchain and what it is. And that's one aim to this course. Uh, you know, it's not about making you guys cool, you know, everybody cool, you know. It's more of a mass literacy thing. Now, the vision for the federal government is for accelerate adoption of um, blockchain technology in Nigeria. So we are paying good more emphasis on this introductory to um, Bitcoin theory because it will give the foundation, everybody will need to understand what blockchain is. So the second one is introduction to JavaScript. JavaScript is a programming language. And why we are studying it is for the development part of the blockchain, you need, we need some bit of JavaScript to do that. We also have Golang, that's the third one. We also need a bit of Golang to do that, to do some function. So let me go to the first one, introduction to Bitcoin theory. So the cost overview, uh, I should have, let me zoom in on this. Okay, so you see better. All right. So it covered the design of Bitcoin as a system as prescribed by Satoshi Nakamoto. So it's for anyone who is interested in Bitcoin in the beginner course of the series. You know, some technical experience will be helpful to complete the course. However, it's open to anyone regardless of experience. So let me say this again. Are you a teacher? Are you a lawyer? Are you a doctor? Are you a nurse? You're a carpenter? You know, you, 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 you're a trader. All you need is the interest and the time to go through the resources. So you can do very well in this course. It's not limited to people that know how to code, no. So in the first chapter of this course, we're looking at the Bitcoin abstract. Um, you know, the Bitcoin white paper was developed by Satoshi um, Nakamoto and released in 2000, 2009, and it has an abstract. The abstract summarizes everything about the, uh, the blockchain, Bitcoin blockchain in particular. So we are going to do that. You do the read through it, understand what peer to peer cash means, um, digital signatures and third parties, right? So in, in, in Bitcoin, in, in not in blockchain generally, it allows, there's no central authority. Nobody controls uh, how to, you know, who transact with who, no. So anybody can transact with anybody. I can give you a store any document for you. I can give you any service without you know, bringing in a third party. So that's peer to peer. It allows that we'll see how that happens. Then we'll look at digital signatures and trusted third party. Now, because everything there is, and not, you know, is decoupled from who you are, it's your digital signature that determines what you own. So let's say you purchase an NFT, for instance, from someone. Remember that NFT lives in the blockchain. It doesn't come out of the blockchain, it lives there. But what gives you access to it is your digital signature. That person that sold it to you, it was his digital signature he used to sign on it and it became yours. And the whole blockchain knew how this happened. So you see what all of these things there. Then we're gonna look at peer-to-peer -peer network. We say no one is in charge. So every net, when you join a, a, a blockchain node, you know, you broadcast, you get other details from your peers. Hey, what have happened since I left this? Uh, where are we at? How many block, um, block heights are we on now? Uh, what are all the that are that has happened? You get all this there from your peers. That's how it's designed to run. Oh, yes, everything there, you know, there's time stamp in it. And there's a way to show that, yes, what was actually done. Look at that. The CPU power, you know, how do... Um, um, nodes in the network operate. We we'll look at the network structure and the messaging. So in the part two, now all these things are defined in the abstract. You read the abstract, it might just read through under a few minutes, but it has all these details just in the abstract. Then in the introduction part of it, we'll go deeper in it. Uh, we'll look at commerce on internet, how commerce can happen, right? We already see that. We we'll look at non-reversible transactions. Uh, one thing that makes the blockchain to stand out is any transaction in the blockchain, you cannot reverse it. In fact, that's the beauty of, that's why we are studying it today. You know, that's why you make different, you make the huge, if you make a transaction, you can't uh, reverse. Let me give you an analogy. 
Right now, you could send money to somebody. Maybe you make payment to someone, or maybe you are, no, you are a vendor, okay? And someone makes payment to you, and you get the money. You say, oh, I've sent, let's say, 20,000 Naira for this product for you. Fine, you saw the alert, okay? But next thing, no, no, maybe you didn't even see that, but I showed you the alert you have gone. But next thing, the money gets reversed, all right? So some people, when you get, they will tell you, hey, I can't give it to you. Let me wait until I see it in my account, right? But in the blockchain, once a transaction happens, it's done. Nothing can reverse it, okay? Or maybe you have some sizable fund somewhere, and all of a sudden, they say, hey, we are freezing this. Even though it belongs to you, well, you cannot use it, right? That's a normal traditional system. But in the blockchain, any transaction you make there is done and done, and nothing will reverse it. So that's the beauty of it. Now, imagine you can use it for different solutions, right? Any solution that require immutability, you don't want it to change. The blockchain is the answer to it. And that's why we are studying this. Okay. We're going to look at privacy also. How do you protect your privacy in that? Of course, uh, your public key and your private key, that your, your, that your digital identities. And unless you link them to, um, unless you link them somehow to somewhere that, you know, gets to you, is completely anonymous. And then we're going to look at how you protect sellers from fraud. I've just said that already, you know, in the blockchain. And if you're a seller, if you sell anything in the blockchain, you, you, they cannot fraud, defraud, you can't go back. So you start looking at this as you are going through this course. Can you think of ways? Can you think of application we could make that can help sellers so that once the people pay them, they know they are paid you. Don't say, hey, let me wait for a lap. No, don't go with it. Now there's a new CBM policy that is out is trying to limit the amount of cash you handle. You know, yes, uh, you know, of course, they're trying to move on into uh, the cashless society, which is what obtained everywhere around the world. You know, you just use your debit card, you make payments, and uh, but here, because of some infrastructure challenges, right? So people will face problems. How do we, oh, you can't withdraw more than this in a week, and you need more than that. You say, okay, make transfer, but the transfer you make, you are not sure whether it will go, it might, make a transfer, you wait there for the next 30 minutes before the person receives it and you start going. You see the cost of making that transaction is now huge. So it's becoming, a, I think I'll see, I see problem in this. And this is where I think we can find a solution. So I challenge you guys, if you are part of this program, think of something. How can we use the blockchain to make micro transactions, to make payments? Federal um, CBN has released the e naira right? It's on the blockchain, although it's not, it's a private, it's a private blockchain. It's not a public blockchain like we know it because it's still centralized. They control everything, but notwithstanding, it's a blockchain um, they release. So are there innovative ways, solutions we can develop that can help boost uh, usability of the e-Naira? Because I think that's the whole point, right? So I put up a challenge, start thinking about that. You could build solutions that can help with making payments down to buying bread, not just, you know, not big, big payment, because I want to go out, if I buy bread of 700 Naira or 1,000, right? I want to use blockchain to make payment for 1,000. I go to the market, I buy a fish for maybe one fish for 700 Naira. I want to pay that woman with through the blockchain. If you come, can come up with solution like this, I tell you, um, you're onto something very, very, very big. Okay. And then we are going on and we look at um, how all this problem we just iterated, how it was proposed to be solved. You know, it talks about security and honesty. In the, bit, um, in the blockchain, there are security, you know, and there's honesty. Honesty in the sense that the system, the math, the, the protocol itself, the way it was designed, it was designed that you just have to be honest to participate. If you try to participate in a way that's not honest, it will cost you resources, and at the end of the day, your resources will be a waste, right? So there's no point. So if you want for you to participate at a no, I'm not talking about individual. I mean the participating no, the computers that are actually processing all these transactions. You could say, what if they decide to make a you know fraud? Well, yes, they want to do that, but the system will, is such sure that if even if you do fraud, number one, that fraud will not be propagated on the on the network. You will lose all the effort you used to do that fraud. So what's the point, right? So it's so, yeah. And um, okay, we'll move on to transaction. Under the transaction, we'll see what electronic cash is. We we'll see how you can spend a coin. 
And then um, you see how you can verify payment. When somebody makes payment, how do you verify that? For, for the end user, it's not your business. Don't worry about that. If they know the, part, the, block, the notes in the blockchain, they do all these things through what we call mining, right? We'll get to see them in the course. So um, pay verification. So how can I verify you've been paid? It's instant. You can know right now something happens. You can go to the blockchain explorer and see what's going on. We we'll look at the existing solutions also and see um, the, how transactions are broadcast on the network. How do you achieve consensus on the network? When a transaction happens, how come that everybody agrees that this transaction has happened? We we'll understand how all this do, um, comes about. Okay, going on to chapter four, we look at the time server. Um, so in the time server, we know that for any event that happens on the blockchain, it is stamped with time. So if I pay you, if I come today, I have money to spend. I have a digital um, cash to spend, for instance. And I use that digital cash and pay Mr. A, right? And maybe later on again, that digital cash appears somewhere again that you pay Mr. B. The network will say, oh, let's look at the timestamp. This one happens before that. So this second one is invalid transaction. So it's quite simple and straightforward like that. And then we'll go to core concept like the proof of work. Now, let me say here, Bitcoin, the, the idea of Bitcoin didn't start, uh, sorry, the idea of uh, decentralized or distributed computing didn't start today. Distributed computing has been something going on, you know, and people have been doing all kinds of work on it. The first work that, uh, I think one of the first work that happened was timestamp, the one we just saw. Someone was able to design how you can timestamp digital um, signatures. Someone did that, okay? So, and other people tried to look at consensus, but they never had a way to solve the problem until in, 20, in 2009, when Satoshi Nakamoto came and dropped the, um, the paper. He was able to solve the problem of decentralization, of distributed computing. And he solved this problem using what we call the proof of work. So it's a key component. If you are making, if you are in this course, you must understand what proof of work is. Very important because that makes you know that yes, you understand the nitty gritty of um, blockchain. So we are going to give you all the materials. Don't worry. Uh, for you people that like to read, you have a lot of things to read, and that's straightforward. It doesn't require mathematics. It doesn't require programming it doesn't require um, coding to understand the concept of proof of work. In fact, I can say explain it, um, you know. So under here, we have the, um, the hash, we have the scanning trees, and we have what you call the nouns, number used ones. I'll talk about the immutable network, the chain effort, how are they all chained together, the proof of work, and then how the nodes, participating nodes, you know, how they vote in the, in the, in the network and how majority of decisions are reached through consensus. We talk about the honest chain. I've talked about honesty before. You, by design, if you're a node, you just have to be honest. If you are not honest, you're wasting your resources. Fine, you shouldn't be in the node because it's a waste of time. It's a waste of your resources, right? So can the blockchain be attacked? Well, theoretically, yes. So, but can you attack the longest chain? We'll see that. And by the time we are done with this course, this idea of um, proof of work is central to the um, to blockchain, to the working of blockchain, because that's what uh, made the blockchain to, you know, got adopted finally when the problem of uh, was solved. So we are going to look at the network also. How does the network and the blockchain network, I know how does it run and how is it maintained? You want to look at that. And um, miners, maybe two miners, they mine a block at the same time. What happens? A miner got a block now, another miner got another block almost the same time. What happened to two of them? We will know which one goes to the node and which one doesn't go to the, uh, to the chain. We understand all that bit on that. And on to chapter seven, we look at incentives. Now, of course, you need incentive to keep the chain running. If there's no incentive, nobody will do anything. I mean, if you come out every day to work and you don't get a reward for that work, you stop, you pack up, you don't want to work anymore. So for those people doing the mining, there is an incentive. And this incentive is built into the, uh, the Bitcoin protocol. So we'll look at that. We'll look at how the Coinbase in every transaction becomes a
play match today. Um, What's the purpose of the Merkle tree? You know, how does it come to solve the problem of um, space and time? We see that under this place. And then we move on to chapter. Oh, have I been off before? Seems I lost. Oh. I'm sorry. It seems my connection uh, went off briefly. But it's back now. Uh, one minute, please. Okay. So I will, I'm just talking about chapter nine. We'll look at how uh, simplified payment verification happens. So in a normal blockchain node, you have all your nodes that have, that are, we're calling the full nodes. But for simple application that can run from your cell phone, all right? Yeah, we have the simplified payment verification. It doesn't get all the data on the full node, but there are mechanisms to make it work and verify transactions also. So we'll look at, that on that is This hundred naira put another one thousand, right? All of them add up to total. But in Bitcoin, in particular, each amount, each amount you receive, so. I want to return to you. So it's a little bit different from the regular accounting system we know. We'll see how that happens under this chapter 10. Uh, so we look at the inputs, outputs, how you combine your values, how you split them, right? And The um, price of the blockchain, the maintenance by public records machine, reading or something. Uh, okay, in chapter, uh oh, okay, that's fine. So, yeah, in chapter twelve, we talk about calculation and don't run, don't don't run, don't run away. I mean, you don't need to understand the nitty gritty of all this calculation. You just need to understand. Uh, you know, Of this. You could say, ah, blockchain can solve that, and this is how. And if we can achieve this, then this is a huge, it will be a huge success. Again, I reiterate again the main purpose. About blockchain in their lives.
Oh, okay. So I'm sorry about the network problems we just had. I'll be, well, I was, I was almost done with the curriculum though. And tomorrow is our onboarding day. Uh, we could revisit some of those during the onboarding for tomorrow by 2 p.m. I look forward to seeing all of you. And more importantly, we'll be walking you through the portal tomorrow. So you can start work, yeah? Uh, I've told Abba to put the link to the curriculum. You can download the curriculum and go through it by yourself. Okay. Oh, one second, can we have the document? Yes, the document is available in your portal, but we are sending the link already. Look out for the link to the document. Um, one of the, let me. Yes. Let me grab the link, one minute. So I just I just send the link to the curriculum on the chat. So um, this is one of the reasons someone was, um, we organized that they will have meetups on Saturday. So during the meetup for Saturday, is there time for you to you know, explore things with your mentors? You, as you already know, uh, you are being grouped, all of you are being grouped into uh, based on your location, based on your state. So your mentors to help you more where you have difficulty going through anything they are capable to help resolve and unblock any issue you have okay so we have tomorrow tomorrow is our big day we want to go and prepare me and my team we're still working around the clock from the back end to make sure you know everybody get on board properly manage all the numbers we have so uh we'll be calling it up today uh let's get back to work and you you prepare for tomorrow 2 p.m will be live again right here from the blockchain center at Beijing university i'm Calisto sibilo and i'm very happy to be um your tutor in this program and i look forward to the products you will generate I talked about uh, someone raised an issue about Arabic and it occurred to me that you could work on doing translation, that's good. And also the, the new CBM policy that limits people from you know, having much cash around. And then we, we still have problem with network when you do normal transfers, transaction, you, sometimes you make a transaction, it comes in the next day and blockchain can be a solution to that. CBN already have the e naira How can we work with the e naira to bring a payment solution that is instant? Once it got, it, once it's made, it never got reversed. So think about these things um, so that when we start forming the project uh, phase, you could group together based on your um, on your areas of interest. So someone is still asking what is needed. If you are using, if you are in this course, I expect you sometimes to look up certain things. We've said this word needed a lot of time, but I'll say it again because they are the owners of this program. 
So NEED and stand for National Information Technology Develop, um, um, yeah, Development Agency. It is their duty. What they do ex exactly is to regulate the environment, the tech environment in Nigeria, and make it um, user friendly. I give you an instance: the the current um, um, the current management from from the Ministry of um, um, Communication down to NIDA, they are doing everything possible to make um, um, you know to to improve the ease of doing business in Nigeria. And you could see it, they are sponsoring this event, training 30,000 people to get it skills. They are talking to regulators, they are going outside, you know, all kinds of um, um, conferences, they are meeting up with um, and different partners there. How do we bring um, solutions down to Nigeria? So it's an agency that have transformed lots of lives, including that of ours right now as we are here. So um if every other agency told this part i think nigeria we are on our step to becoming a very great nation so that's NIDA. NIDA, they are the sponsors they are the owners of this program just not just NIDA. of course they are part of the federal government so it's a federal government initiative being run through NIDA. okay so we are calling it quit it's almost um 3 p.m now so i'm going to log out and wait and go get ready for you guys tomorrow. I can't wait to see you. Bye-bye.